So 343 just released a blog detailing a lot of the changes coming with the May 10th update and it's a lot of really exciting stuff, some playlist changes, some changes to the sandbox and quality of life improvements. So let's jump right into this dang thing right here. So we'll scroll down. It's all the kind of the stuff to let you know like, all the cool stuff that's happening. Right now, we'll go down the list here. Super Fiesta is now coming into Halo Infinite and saying the party is just getting started. The fan favorite mode from Halo 5 will make its explosive return with the update as campaign unique weapon variants, along with fully upgraded equipment, enter the arena. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be a separate playlist from what Fiesta is currently right now. I think a lot of people would just rather see Super Fiesta be the Fiesta game mode. That's kind of like the idea of the game mode, right? To just kind of jump in and do some crazy stuff. Stuff, and hopefully this will just be that. Of course, Super Fiesta is a lot of fun. We'll jump in and play certainly when it comes out. Uh, ranked King of the Hill changes will be coming in saying that based on player feedback, the hill will now spawn in faster at the start of a match and no longer will have a wind up time when a player initially enters it. Say to here more specifically, saying that the initial hill will be reduced from 15 seconds to spawn in down to five. The wind up period to score has been removed. So you just jump in and you start scoring. I actually like that move right there as well. It was the same players can score right away when stepping into the hill. Again, that kind of ties into the no wind up time right there. Uh, this allows players to quickly score while maneuvering grenades and avoiding damage. So a lot of great changes there. I really like this a lot. I was kind of hoping to see if there was an ability to not have like the nuke the hill kind of thing with King of the Hill, where like you actually have some scrap time and it moves based off on a timer rather than a score. But I, you know, it's all they want to do it. I don't really, I really don't mind it honestly when it comes to like, King of the Hill the way they have it right now. Though I do kind of like the scrap time and pre-moving to the hill kind of thing. It just adds an extra level of complexity right there. Now we have some sandbox balance tuning coming in here as well. One is the disruptor. It's getting like a nerf and a buff and the same time kind of thing. We'll scroll down and let you know what I'm talking about here. So they removed the damage over time effect with the disruptor, but also reduced the chain distance from five world units to 2.5 world units. So they cut that in half. They also increased the super combined damage from 60 to 70 and increased the rate of fire from 4.285 rounds to five rounds per second. So it's gonna be shooting a little bit faster. Your super combines can be doing a little bit more damage. I'll definitely want to do some testing to see how much effectiveness this actually has taken place because the disruptor is in an awkward place. I feel right now where like it's not really that effective on players, but it's great to stun vehicles. I've noticed mostly in BTB. And I'm curious how that super combine damage of 70 will actually make it so it'll be a little bit more lethal. Again, we'll kind of have to wait and see how that actually plays out. The spike grenades are getting a major change as well, saying that they're actually kind of putting them more in line with the Halo 3 spike grenades. Saying here specifically, they increase the number of flechettes that are released from a detonation from eight to 16, so twice the amount. Because most of the time I've found with the spike grenades, that they definitely just miss their mark most of the time and they feel more like a area of denial kind of thing rather than something they actually deal out damage well they look to actually make that change quite more significant in here i will say reduce the number of flechette travels distance from five world units to 3.5 world units so the area of effects gonna be a little bit shorter right there again area of effect damage from two point from 3.2 world units to two world units also reduce the aoe damage amount from 300 damage to 160 damage so that's a big nerf right there and also adjusted flechette bounce behavior to deviate less so you're gonna have to be a bit more accurate with your spike grenades but they should be doing more damage and being a little more effective within that tighter damage range. The dynamo grenades are also gaining some significant changes here as well. I know a lot of people have some mixed feelings about that, but we'll see how it says right here. Saying reduce the shock area of effect distance from 3.5 world units to two world units. So that's a nerf. Reduce the shock chain distance from five world units to two world units. Now that's a significant difference right there. To me, I feel like this makes a difference of like saying if you're playing on the map Aquarius, right? You throw a shock grenade into like blue or yellow engine area, you pretty much can hit everyone that's in that room. This sounds like that might actually reduce that to much more like half that room probably would be hit by a shock grenade, which I think is a good thing. I think the chain effect, while great, it was a little too far reaching. So I think this change is very good. They also said they increased the shock damage per burst from 18 to 20 months. So they'll do a little bit more damage. Removed movement stun from shock grenade damage. So 
that means that you won't be having that slow down effect which is really great lowered arming time from 0.65 seconds to 0.5 seconds so it's gonna be deploying a little bit faster right there Reduce the delay between shock damage pulses from 3 to 2.5 seconds. So it's going to be dealing out more damage a little bit faster. So again, like kind of the same thing with like the spike grenades, right? A shorter distance of effect, but that effect is a little bit more significant. And lastly, it's to add one additional shock damage pulse at 2.5 seconds. So not a straight up nerf, but not a straight up buff. I think it just kind of was like, let's reduce the range on it, but then also make it a little bit more effective within that range, which I think is kind of the right way to go. Uh, the shroud screen saying in ranked arena, the shroud screen will be updated to have one charge upon pickup. That's great because I don't know, just, it again was the uh, ranked arena experience. You want that to be a little bit more in line with it comes to just straight up gun on gun play. Like, yeah, the sandbox can come into effect a little bit here and there, but you definitely want to be focused more on pure ability of shooting and, and outplaying players. Uh, the Forge is actually getting some updates as well, saying what they may update will be a lot of quality of life updates to Forge in the form of PC screenshot uploading and numerous bug fixes. Uh, well, one of the things they're talking about is saying that to, to improve the stability of script heavy cre creations, individual script brains will be updated to have a 128 node cap. But it did state that the existing creations above that limit will still work. They just not have the able to, ability to add in more nodes beyond that. On more of a Forge note, the Forge lead, Michael Shorehair, did say that they're actually going to do a bit of a discussion kind of thing about Halo Infinite community team on Discord here, which I'll be joining in. I'm actually currently waiting in it right now and I'll be recording it. I'll be reporting on it as soon as we get some information about it as well. Uh, ask, answering questions from the fans and stuff like that and some playlist details and things like that. So definitely go and get some good information out of this. So make sure you subscribe to know when that goes live. FPS counter will be coming to the Xbox platform, much like we have right now on PC. This is again, just like great to so kind of know what kind of experience you're having. You know, you might say I want the 120 frames, but you're not sure if you're actually getting it. Now you'll actually know, but it's also going to mention that this will be great for forgers. So then you can actually can test out how steady your frame rate is on your map. So that's actually going to be a really nice addition. The UI is getting a big change here as well, saying that we'll be making the custom game browser accessible from the custom game option right on the main menu. Yes, we, the custom game browser in Halo Infinite is, uh, well, kind of quiet right now. And I think it's because it's kind of buried in underneath, you know, different UI stuff. And so be able to have that much more accessible We'll have more people jump in and play. Hopefully, that's the idea. Big change here when it comes to the matchmaking options available on screen. They're doubling it from five to 10 before you need to scroll. So that is absolutely amazing right there. Uh, there's a lot of dead space on the main menu when it comes to uh, selecting your mode. So I'm glad to see that. Uh, they did state though that this will move the picture that comes up above each uh, playlist now into like the match details, which I'm fine with that. The image thing, that was just kind of like a little eye candy. There was really not much of a way of purpose for that. This adds more purpose to the matchmaking menu. So I am all for this, absolutely all for this. Hopefully it'll help out spread out the playlist, uh, the deep player list a little bit more. So then people are not just playing like quick play and ranked all the time, pretty much. I'd also say last, but certainly not least, a section of the bundles from previous seasons will be available to be purchased through the customization menu. When checking out an item that was part of an eligible bundle, players will now be presented with an option to view and purchase that bundle from the shop. So does this mean that FOMO when it comes to these bundles is gone in Halo Infinite? That any previous season's bundle will be available to be purchased. So then if you missed out on something for that week, you can actually jump into the customization menu and you see if you like something, you'll be able to buy that, which I think is a logical choice when it comes to a free to play game. You want to be able to buy something as soon as you want to give players more options to give them money, right? That's kind of the idea of whole live service free to play model kind of stuff. So that's actually gonna be really great. I'm sure that I know I've definitely seen a lot of people out there in my comment section going like, when is this coming back? I want to be able to get this kind of stuff. I know obviously spending money is kind of like on customization. People have a little sore spot for that. Again, it's a free to play game. I will say there are some times where I was like, man, I kind of wish I bought into something, but you know, I'm like really, I don't really spend a whole lot money on this game anyways and so the options there for people if they want it i see it all the time in my comment section so i'm actually happy for those people we saw a lot of resolved issues coming with this may 10th update as well saying various server and stability crashes are being reduced uh various theater and observer improvements and bug fixes 
We'll see. Uh, the theater mode in 343 games are never usually that good. Observer mode definitely has its own issues. Again, we'll we'll wait and see what actually gets fixed on this one. This is a pretty vague description right here. I'm just glad the theater mode's getting some love because I love the theater mode in Halo, but for some reason in 343 games are always super weird and buggy and just not that enjoyable experience to play around with. But I digress. Get back into it saying Halo 5 will no longer crash at launch, attempting to launch games and PCs that don't meet the minimum specs, stuff like that. Which, again, that's great to give more accessibility to the game. Addressing an issue causing the wasp gun jamming when playing with the bumper dripper control scheme. Again, I haven't really played around this because I play a mouse and keyboard, but I'm glad to see that's been addressed. And cutscenes should no longer replay when relaunching the game. So a lot of great and interesting changes. We'll definitely have to test them out when it does go live. I'll make some videos about it on this channel here, guys. If you want to know more about the new narrative event that's currently happening within Halo Infinite, well, check out this video right here. Thank you much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.